Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home, and today I've got a little collection update and sale pickup video for you. If you've been following along in the physical media community for the last several weeks, you probably have seen the ads or the different posts from people buying from the Kino Lorber March into April sale. They've been running it for a little while, and I finally took advantage. I was talking to Heath over at Serial at Midnight during the second episode of my podcast, The Films at Home podcast and he had mentioned how much great stuff Kino has and I knew of their 4k releases but it had been a little while since I had really like dove into their catalog and their sale was huge I mean there must have been I don't know four five hundred titles for sale it was like 20 pages to sift through when it was in alphabetical order and I went through I actually talked to Heath he made some recommendations I grabbed some movies that I wanted and I picked up about a hundred dollars worth which gave me let's see four five six seven eight that gave me ten movies so roughly ten dollars a piece for these blu-rays but there were some as low as five to seven dollars some around ten dollars a lot of them were around ten and then 4k discs which were like 12 to 15 so i grabbed one of those as well now if you like movie collecting if you like learning about new movies blu-ray 4k reviews if you just enjoy movies in general i think you'll enjoy the channel so please subscribe i'd really appreciate it help us grow this community to 100,000 subscribers this year so we can show people that physical media is still alive and well and make sure you like this video so others will see it and we can spread the word about physical media now let's jump right into what i got from the sale so to kick things off i grabbed some like it hot on 4k i did not have a chance to review this one yet but i will get a review out shortly this was only 15 dollars, so for me given this is a recent 4k release from a boutique label still has the slip cover and everything that seemed like a no-brainer and i had heard from several reliable sources that this was a pretty good transfer so I'm going to check it out myself and get a full review out but I love upgrading my blu-ray of that to 4k because it's another classic movie that I can't wait to watch in that upgraded resolution now as part of the Kino Lorber sale they also had a few titles on sale from their partner labels one of which is Cohen Media and the other of which is Code Red so I did grab a Code Red horror movie called Trick or Treat stars David Carradine who you probably know from Kill Bill most likely if you're my age but another goofy 80s slasher to add to my collection that might be my favorite genre that's my like turn off your brain let's just watch a movie and have fun type genre that I love so anytime there's an 80s slasher they get me with the cool artwork and this one actually had Orson Welles from Citizen Kane as an advisor on this movie so like it has a decent pedigree behind it. 90 minutes long, early 80s slasher, perfect little short movie to watch at night to turn your brain off and just have some fun. Now from the Kino Lover Studio Classics line, I did grab The Last Man on Earth and I shout out to Heath from Serial at Midnight for this one because I totally missed it my first time going through the sale. Now this is a Vincent Price movie. If you know him, he's the horror legend. If you don't know him, go watch his stuff. But he's an excellent actor and The Last Man on Earth is actually the first adaptation of Richard Matheson's novel I Am Legend. You guys probably know it best from the Will Smith movie I Am Legend or maybe you know Omega Man but Last Man on Earth came first and a lot of people think it's the most faithful adaptation of the book. So this is from 1964, a little black and white here. Um, it's got some audio commentaries, it's got trailers, TV spots, it actually has an alternate ending um, but I'm just really excited to check it out because I had heard that the I Am Legend movie that I know best, the Will Smith one, is really not the best adaptation. It's an okay movie, but it's not as faithful of a book, so I can't wait to check that one out with Vincent Price. Now, another recommendation here that came from Heath was this Kino Lober Studio Classics double feature with Brian Brown and Brian Dennehy, FX and FX2. These are some mid-80s, early 90s action movies that I honestly had, I, I'd heard of them, but I didn't know much about them. And Heath told me that I, I needed to watch these. And so, you know, I said, okay, double feature. I think it was maybe $11. We're talking five or six bucks a piece for this. Came with the slipcover. Can't complain about that. So very happy to have this in my collection. I know like next to nothing about it other than there is some like 
special effects tie-in like the fx is that the one of the characters is like a special effects expert um but i can't wait to see what that one's all about now another one from kino lober studio classics no slip cover but i got this for five dollars so i can't really complain from 1995 we've got the scarlet letter i didn't have a movie adaptation of the scarlet letter in my collection and so i saw this for 4.99 and has demi moore gary oldman robert duvall sounded like a pretty decent cast so when i saw that i said eh you know what, I'll take a shot on it. I know the book, but I've never watched a movie adaptation of it. And with this cast, it seemed like it would be a pretty good watch. Now, that's a blind buy. Again, I know nothing about it. Maybe it's terrible, but eh, five bucks, you can't really go wrong there. Now, I also dove back way, way back in time. This is one of the um, oldest movies in my collection now. And it is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea from 1916. So this is the film adaptation of Jules Verne's novel, which I think most people know. But this is from 1916, and it was a brand new 4K restoration done by Universal Pictures. So although it's on a 1080p Blu-ray, Universal did do a full 4K restoration, and I've heard that this actually looks very good considering the movie is now over 105 years old. Now we got a couple other cheaper pickups here that were all under 10 bucks. I think most of them were actually like $8.99 or $7.99. Uh, but one I grabbed is called The Day After. I was turned on to this through a few threads on like Reddit and actually TikTok videos that were talking about the most disturbing movies of all time. And typically when you talk about the most disturbing movies, people will bring up like The Human Centipede or like a Serbian film or like stuff that's just like almost like shock, you know, types the shock jock in movie form. Like, and, and, you know, Human Centipede, I've, I've watched because, like, it's a horror movie. But, like, I have no interest in stuff like a Serbian film. I've never seen it. I don't plan to see it. I don't, you know, I don't like to just be shocked for the sake of being shocked if your movie has no merit. But when I think about disturbing movies, the ones I want to watch are the ones that make me think and really, you know, give me that sense of like dread, not just something that is like truly gross and disturbing. So The Day After was actually a TV movie, which is maybe the most realistic depiction of a nuclear holocaust. This was done in the 80s, and I heard from a lot of people that like they watched it with their families, they watched it in high school. It was like the most watched TV movie of all time. Kino has it out here on Blu-ray, and it has both the, the TV cut and the theatrical cut in TV aspect ratio and theatrical aspect ratio. It's got commentaries, interviews with the stars and directors. Um, but it's it's basically like, you know, the day after referring to the day after a, a nuclear event. You know, Russia and the United States, um, they've launched nukes at each other. They've both hit their targets. And now what remains? And this is like set in a, in a small town in like Kansas and um, just is supposed to be very, very disturbing. And I've heard of a similar movie called Threads, which is a British movie that plays with the same type of topic and is supposed to be even more disturbing. And I figured, well, you know, if that one's out there, I might as well get the American version still on the search to get a copy of Threads. I believe you can watch it on YouTube, but um, especially with all the current events, you know, those movies are maybe as relevant as ever. And although they're disturbing, I think they... Uh, from what I've heard, are, are very realistic and kind of sobering. So um, I, I want to watch them, as weird as that may sound. So now going from a very serious, disturbing, creepy, tough topic to talk about to something a little bit more fun, um, I did grab Half Baked, Dave Chappelle. This is early Dave Chappelle. This is 1997. This is pre-Chappelle show. This is before all that stuff. Half Baked is basically a... a a stoner comedy. I don't know what else there is to say about it, right? It's a stoner comedy, but I love Dave Chappelle. I love what he does. I think he's hilarious. I think he continues to like call out things that other people won't talk about in his comedy. And I have not honestly seen a lot of movies with him. I think the only movie I've watched with Dave Chappelle in it other than Half-Baked, is probably Dave Chappelle's Block Party, which is an awesome documentary if you haven't seen it. But I hadn't seen Half-Baked in a long, long time, and so I picked that up on Blu-ray. Uh, again, one that Heath actually found for me because I missed it scrolling through all the different titles. Now, next up, we're going back into the horror genre with another 80s horror movie starring Elizabeth Shue. 
It is Link. This is one I've wanted for a while. It's like a killer orangutan movie. Elizabeth Shue is great. It's also directed by Richard Franklin, who directed FX2, which I just showed you a few movies back. Um, but it's just more of that like 80s horror. I mean, there's nothing better to me than 1980s horror. If I could go back and like live in one decade of film, I know that there's so many great films that were made over the decades, but like... Being able to be alive during that era of 80s horror movies, which I totally missed being born in 1992, I would have loved to have just like had that experience. Every weekend at the theater, there's some new bananas horror movie to go watch with your friends. It would have been so much fun, but I'm just glad now that you know studios like Kino, Shout Factory, Arrow Video, they're all putting them out on Blu-ray and 4K, which is awesome. So now last one here of the pickups is a film noir, which uh, I was becoming more interested in the more I talked to Heath and he gave me this recommendation during our chat in episode two of the podcast and it is The Hitchhiker from 1953 presented in the academy ratio black and white so you got black bars in the left and right old school classic movie now it stars Frank Lovejoy, Edmund O'Brien and William Tallman but the big thing about this is that it was directed by Ida Lupino who was the only film noir director who happened to be a woman um, according to Kino anyway I mean I, I find I found that hard to believe when I first read the description but I mean I guess it makes sense in 1940s and 50s Hollywood how many female directors were there period they weren't given many opportunities and then film noir is sort of its own little niche so um, it's the only movie film noir movie directed by a woman it was independently produced it was from a, a blacklisted writer if you know about blacklisting in the 50s uh it was kind of talking about stuff that you know in the 50s were people making movies about you know dangerous hitchhikers no the world was still like unicorns in in rainbows at least in hollywood's eyes of course in the rest of the world there were murders and war and everything happening everywhere but you know, Hollywood, you, you didn't show that stuff. It was all unicorns and rainbows and sunshine. And because this was independently produced, they got a little bit darker than most film noirs. And so just reading the description and reading about the history of it, I'm super interested. Can't wait to check that out. And I'm glad that movies like that exist to push the envelope, you know, without stuff like The Hitchhiker or without Alfred Hitchcock pushing Psycho in the 60s. I mean, Psycho had the first time a toilet was ever shown flushing on screen. Pre-70s Hollywood was like so, so pre-60s, I guess, was just so, so conservative and boring at times with their codes. Um, that I love watching movies like this from that time period that push the boundaries that we see a lot of movies um, really you know, focusing on today. And the movies we love today don't exist without movies like this. So it's an important movie and I can't wait to watch it. So overall, I got 10 movies here, nine Blu-rays, one 4K. There were also some other good 4K deals. Hard Target was on sale. I skipped that one. I think I'll pick that one up later. Not the biggest Jean-Claude Van Damme fan, but I'll pick that up if I get it for a good price. But it also had some of the other 4K discs, which I've already reviewed. Um, so it, it was a pretty good sale. Lots of great Blu-rays on, you know, for $5.99, $4.99, $8, $9, which is a great deal for boutique label Blu-rays. And they had a ton of great stuff. Uh, I already have a lot of Kino, so, you know, the 10 that I picked, I, I had to kind of search through for but if you're just getting into Kino Lorber stuff highly recommend going and checking out their website and their shop and buying from them directly because they tend to have the best sales when it comes to their label other stores will put on Kino sales but Kino does it best right there on their own site and they shipped it to me in a couple days no problem great packaging and so can't say enough good things about them their website and the whole process and the sale was great so I appreciate them putting the sale on and I'm sure they appreciate my hundred dollars but I appreciate the work that they've done even more so thanks for watching this hopefully this gave you some recommendations maybe some new movies you might want to watch or check out or pick up on blu-ray or 4k tons of great stuff at kino i can't recommend them enough so go check out their site but also check the links down in the description if you just want to pick some of these up from amazon i'll put links down there where you can purchase them and that helps support my channel so totally up to you but i'll also leave a link to the kino sale so you can go support them as well no affiliation with kino if you use their sale i don't get anything for it but i just want to support them and what they're doing that's about it. Make sure you subscribed and like this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys picked up from this sale, if you got anything good. And also make sure to subscribe to the podcast. The links will be down in the description. Definitely check out episode two with Heath from 
serial at midnight and I have episodes coming weekly for at least the next, I, I don't know, as many weeks as I can count. I have lots of great guests lined up and some cool topics to cover. So follow along over there, follow on social media, all the links in the description and uh, just keep supporting the channel by watching and liking and sharing these videos. I really appreciate all the community support and hopefully we hit that 100k goal here in 2022 and we can have a nice big celebration and giveaways and all that good stuff when we do it. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and I'll talk to you all soon.